Hello and welcome back y'all. Um, in this episode, I will be uh, sharing how to minimize or eliminate construction do-overs, right? Mistakes happen all the time, accidents, incidents happen, but how to minimize and or sometimes eliminate them. Um, so mistakes, all mistakes are always unwelcome and very much time consuming. You know, you have to spend time taking this apart and recutting, resawing, reassembling, uh, those type of things, right? It delays the process and the progress. So a lot of people are disdained by that, right? Especially if you didn't make that mistake. So let's get right into it. Um, suppose there is an upcoming inspection, right? And for one reason or another, the electricians failed inspection. But the sheetrock, the drywall hanger, is ready to do their task so they can get in and out, so they can go to the next phase of money. Even if they're finishing the sheetrock or the drywall, they need to hang it first, correct? And so this uh, kind of caused some battle, some anguish, some uh, uh, maybe even hatred on a job. And you, everybody's mad and upset. Right, so everyone is looking forward to their next phase of funds, but you, the drywall hanger, cannot complete or he has a hard task um, because of that, that failure, right? And everybody is disgruntled. So everyone is off schedule, right? The schedule that they prepared for, or planned for, right? These are skilled workers, so by now, Everybody should be experienced. Experience has nothing to do, once again, with mistakes or errors. Everybody had lots and lots of practice at this point, right? Now is showtime, um, but it's inescapable, these errors, right? So now how to minimize or eliminate them? I would give a point to as in number one would be to visualize the outcome, right? You have to study the plans or get the instructions, uh, make a tab, a list of what are they in this task. And sometimes don't, well, you don't want to become overwhelmed with a lot of stuff. So break them into manageable small pieces, right, if you will, and then create a checkoff list as you go through. Still doesn't say you're not going to make mistakes or errors, right? Uh, stagnate the progress, right? So I would say then manage all outcomes throughout the whole process. So as you're visualizing uh, the outcome, you're managing it as well. So every every step. You're saying, okay, that is complete. That's that was well done. The next phase of that task, all right, I got that one out the way. Everything seemed to be working pretty good in my favor, right? This is what I mean by okay, managing. So be certain to bring your critical thinking and our problem solving skills, cognitive learning, right? You have that information. Uh, critical thinking is one of those things. Sometimes we neglect. Uh, our problem solving skills, right? You don't want to even have to go to them or lean on them because you want to you want to have that ahead of you, right? So I can see this beforehand that this can potentially happen. Listen, including natural errors, I think we should own them and manage them by preparing for them, right? So you know they're going to happen. So you can see up in advance, okay, I can see this is not going to work. Um, um, yeah, maybe maybe I'll try something else when I get to that portion of this task, right? Uh, never point blame at anybody, especially sometimes people work by themselves, but most of the time you need help, right? A helper or, or a laborer, general laborer at that point. So but don't, don't point fingers. What that does is delay the process even further. Look, in every argument, one of the worst things to do is to go back over what you've already arguing about, right? Example, let's say that something happened and it was disagreeable, right? We were fussing and arguing, things like that, so it slows progress down. So the last thing we should do is whatever made that argument possible, right? 
Uh, that's one of the worst things to do. So you have to smother that table at, put it aside, and move forward for production. And, and I find a lot of times we don't do that in our industry. You know, it's about competition. So we want to compete all the time. Who can do it the fastest? Who can do it the best? Uh, uh, you know, and all of those type of things. You know, sort of like the um, driving a nail one strike, so to speak. You know, when we have a whole house to build, and then we have time uh, to do some of that activity, uh, those activities. And keeping notes on why it happened make more sense. Even if it's a mental note, you want to know why that error occurred so it doesn't happen again. This is that progress, even on in, the, in, in, in that time and space, this is still progress. Uh, I would also say uh, know that nobody is exempt from making uh, mistakes or errors, uh, things of that nature, right? You have to learn to work together. Uh, so this partnership uh, we have uh, on the job is for one common goal. We need to get that building constructed. Not by any means necessary, we're following, following the plans, we're interpreting blueprints. So we're following a road map, it's already there. Sometime we can tweak it a little bit as long as it's for the better of uh, the project, the overall project, uh, having to rely on memory. I find that a lot of construction guys rely on memory, and we back at this competition, a competitive edge uh, we want over someone else. Uh, so I want to rely on my memory, something I've done in the past, but this might be a totally different task, or a totally different job. It looks similar, but we can't use those uh, steps anymore, or not, at least not on this particular job, on that task. Uh, some, this is something you've done many, 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 many times, right? So we want to use this uh, uh, competitive edge uh, to show off, basically, right? And sometimes it catches us short. We have to apologize or look crazy or things of that nature, right? Being overconfident, right? That's clearly one of the largest of the two of being overconfident. You know, man, I've been doing this for 10, 20, 30 years. I know it inside and out. I want to show you that I know these. They, they all cause delays uh, in the progress, all right, in the work progress. Using substandard material, and you might not even be the person who's ordering uh, the materials, um, who did a requisition and a material now on the job and you get it in your hands and you're supposed to perform a certain way with that substandard material, correct? So how do you make that work? Well, by experience, you know, the, uh, the architect drafted, the engineer approves it, the contractor agrees to it, and then now the worker gets it and here it is. Okay, I gotta, I gotta roll with the punches, but somehow it's not working or it slows down progress. And let's look at uh, setup, right? Uh, I'm talking about setting up tools and things like that. Be early in the morning when you first arrive on the job. Uh, Sometimes we're not fully prepared. We've brought out enough tools because, you know, we have to move around the house or building, whatever task we have avail uh, uh, have handed to us. We don't know sometime what, what is going to be asked or required for us to do the next uh, day. And so we have prepared, right? Um, this may be from uh, inexperience, you know, or you just didn't know that somebody wasn't going to show up, so you now have to do something totally different uh, than you plan to do um, or you have to continue to do from the previous day, right? Don't be uh, afraid to ask questions, right? Sometimes pride get in the way, and we refuse to go to resources. So I want to figure this out on my own because I just asked for a raise and uh, now I look sort of, no, it's one common goal. We are trying to get it done. Uh, how it makes you feel is different than the outcome of the project, right? That's a personal thing. And because you st stepped out on the limb and say this is who you are, where everybody knows you're the lead cutter or you who you are in position-wise on that particular job. So this reduced the number of uh, uh, things that could potentially go wrong. And speaking of reduction, you have to reduce the number of opinions, right? So if it's okay if you ask your foreman or the superintendent or, or the lead guy uh, in, on your crew, hey, look, take a look at this to double check it. Make sure that I have this um, 
this list that I've created, task list for myself, it looks good so we can move forward. Now it's lunch, then the day is over. We all, we had eight hours of production, right? So don't be afraid to ask uh, anybody for, you know, their opinion of something. Um, but yet, don't get too many of them. <laughs> don't get too many of them. Um, and this should be done before the process or whatever was done was non-reversible or it, excruciating pain behind replacement or the do-over, as I put it in the beginning, in the title. Uh, have someone else to set their eyes on your work. So even if they're, they don't say anything, have them to look at it. It says nothing, one common goal. We on that job for one common goal. That's it. And so once that has been, everybody looks good. So now, that's a possibility that you can get that uh, increase, that, that pay raise. So one of the other things that I think, you know, uh, we have to eliminate distractions. So on um, some of my jobs, I recall that some employees was everywhere they moved or in position around that house, wherever they, that task was, they had to unplug the extension card. They had to uh, uh, unplug the radio and move the radio with them because they like listen to music. There's nothing wrong with that. I love music. I'm a musician. This is what I do. But then you got to know that all of those things that you have to run uh, power out of the way of others uh, tripping and falling and things like that in the main route of supplies and coming in and out, things of that nature, right? It's time consuming. And so then be mindful of those things. Uh, um, you're eliminating the distractions. So, you know, you got somebody else's opinion, they on you in your ear saying, uh, I don't know, I don't think that's right. Well, ask them, or have them to point out, or show you why that particular thing isn't right, right? And what, what should it look like? We say we're not worried about them uh, at some time, but a lot of times we are. And this invites stress. Uh, when you say one thing, but your body speaks volume on the other because you said that particular thing? Yes, you are. You were. Um, and we have to sometimes look at um, creating and following a task uh, just sort of helps you not to forget certain things because you're checking them off one at a time. I did this, I did this, I did that, I did this. Now it's a lunch. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do these things and you feel so good about them. That is your own motivation. You know, when we look at and say that the, the farmer didn't say I did a good job, you tell you, you validate you in other words. Uh, it's okay, it feels good. The butterflies, uh, the butterfly effect feels good when someone else tells you that, but you validate you and say, oh man, I feel good. This is the, the T. I I did this job the, uh, or this task. Um, a lot of times when we are focused on the overall project, your goals um, for the week, don't try to finish them in a day, right? You have to break them down or trim them down into small manageable pieces and say, look, as long as from Monday to Friday, it's Friday now and all of the said tasks are done, it doesn't matter on Monday you, you, you worked and there was a lot of failure. Then we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right, and Friday to, to catch up, to get it right. So don't be in a, and don't turn a deaf ear, a blind eye to those mistakes and cover them up. Uh, everything has a cause and effect. Do you believe that if you bought a vehicle today, and it would happen to be have been an uh, accident. Do you realize that that car would never run like the original car when it was very new, right? Because there's a negative cause and effect, right? Now it might run great, but it's not going to run like it was original, right? Okay. So, so things like that, you know. And I would say then. Uh, Sometimes you have to take a mental break from being stressed. You don't want that. Uh, it's, um, look, we use mental thinking and physical action on a job every day, right? Nearly all the time, they are unintentional. I'm talking about the mi mistakes. I can't think of anyone who really wants the job or sabotage the job, right, intentionally. But, yeah, I guess it occurs.